This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Vero Double Shackle Bloca Catena Bike Lock. This lock was sent to me by Paul, who is the owner of a bike shop in Amsterdam, and he was curious as to what it would take to break into this lock with a brute force attack. Now that's something we're going to be attempting in a future video, but I wanted to give you a little preview today, because I've taken a close look at this lock with an eye toward destructive attacks, and I think they did a pretty good job. I don't see many attack vectors that are a significant improvement over simply cutting this eight and a half millimeter chain with a pair of bolt cutters or an angle grinder. I do have one idea, it's a little outside the box, and I'm going to tell you what it is at the end of this video. The reason I'm gonna tell you in advance is because I don't give it greater than a 50% chance of succeeding, and I wanna see if you guys can come up with something better. So, more on that later. Now, let's take a closer look at this lock and see what it takes to pick into. It's a pretty unusual lock design. We have two shackles, one for securing each end of the chain. And when the shackles are closed, they are almost entirely inside of the lock body. The lock itself is made mostly out of brass, which is very good for corrosion resistance, since this will be outside most of the time, but not very good with repelling brute force. So what they did was they wrapped it in a layer of hardened steel. This is actually a pretty common construction for Italian locks, and I have at least a dozen locks that are made like this, just like this Corbin. You can see a lot of brass on the inside and a thick armor plate. Usually locks like this, or locks with this construction, are this shutter lock design, but there's a few others out there as well. Now, this has a ball bearing locking mechanism, which means we are not shimming this open. There's probably a circle, a circular actuator right here in the center, and then ball bearings that go into either side. So let's lock this back up and see if we can pick into it. I'm gonna use top of the keyway tension for this, and I think that'll work and a standard hook in 18 thousandths. Nothing on one, nothing on two. Three is binding, got a click, and we went into a false set. Counter rotation on four, got four set. Counter rotation on five, and we got him set. Pulling back, I am stuck under four, which dropped down, so I'm gonna reset him. Okay, back to the beginning counter rotation on one, and it looks like we got it open. So, definitely a few spools in here, but only a five pin lock, and frankly, a competent picker shouldn't have too much trouble with it. Okay, now for my idea on a brute force attack. When I'm evaluating a lock, I usually try to find its weakest point. And on this particular lock, I think the weak point is right here. You can see the armor plate is very thin, and so is the brass that holds the lock in place, or holds the shackle in place. So my idea is to push this shackle outwards through this thin portion of armor plate and, arm, and brass. Now recall that we have a ball bearing locking mechanism with an actuator in the middle and the ball right next to it. So if we can push that shackle outward, we should be able to free it from that, from that ball bearing locking mechanism. It'll probably be difficult to pull out, but we should be able to do it with pliers. Now, pushing this through brass and hardened steel is not something easy to do. And the best way I can think of to do it is to apply some sort of force in between these two shackles. Maybe we'll use the double wrench method or a couple of long levers. I even have a low power hydraulic spreader that I could probably put in between here to try. The problem with this attack is that Vero appears to have thought about it, and they purposely weaken the portion of the shackle that's outside of the lock body by drilling it out. So we don't have a lot of strength in the shackle up here, but I think we should have a little bit more strength than this little piece of hardened steel and the brass down here. So that's my idea on how to break this. I'm curious if you guys have something better. Now recall, I want to attack the lock itself, not the chain. That also means no putting rods through either one of these and twisting, since that's just a variation of a chain attack. I think it might work, or just as likely to bend whatever sort of rod we're using. 
Okay, that's it for today. You will be seeing this lock again soon, or actually you will not be seeing this lock. What you'll be seeing is the other lock that Paul sent me. He sent me another one of these that is well used. You can see it is, it's pretty well rusted from being outside. So this is the lock that we are going to be subjecting to our brute force attack. So Paul, thank you very much for both of these. To everyone else, if you have any ideas on how to open this up or any other questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.